So it's the 1st or 2nd of June, summer's upon us in the middle of the uh, rather pleasant heat wave. Very dry, we haven't had any rain for about two months in fact, so everything's completely bone dry. So I've been watering like mad, so I'll just do a quick roundup of how the allotment's looking early in June in 2020. Let's start at the bottom of the plots, really, I think. Oh, actually, let's go right to the bottom. Here's the giant leaf pile. So this is part of our leaf collection for next year. So this will rot down and this can all be mixed into the beds as leaf mould to provide additional organic material. And here are this year's strawberries that I transplanted from last year's bed. And again, mulched them with cardboard. So last year, when I put them in, there's hardly any fruit, but they've done quite well this year. Here's our main potato bed at the bottom. Now I'm not using soil to earth them up with, I'm just using cardboard to keep the water in and to keep the light from the tubers. I think I read somewhere it's slightly easier than using topsoil, so we'll see how this goes as a potato growing method. So we have a poppy growing here and also a fennel plant that's popped up in the middle. And perhaps less excitingly, let's look at the compost pile. We started this pile in about January, so it's built up nicely. Lots of cardboard, usually large amounts of coffee. I found I've had to water these compost heaps really thoroughly in the summer because they're starting to dry out but what's under there seems to be decomposing quite nicely, yep, full of insects. As you can see I've got several water tanks, so I keep these well filled with water in the summer so we don't run out of water. Apple tree as you can see has had a bit of a prune, it got way too big last year so I just cut it right back and let it grow back from its branches again. And there's a few ladybird keeping the black fly down. And coming up here we've got our little dwarf French beans, got these from Better Food and popped them in, they're doing quite well so we're going to have a massive load of beans this year which is great. This is the silver leaf beet chard and a few little baby seedlings here and there. Here's the onion bed, I had to put this all back together again after the badgers dug it up, which is what they tend to do. They made a bit of a mess but we can put it back together again. I'll need to put some brambles and some netting around it to deter them from going on there. Here we have a couple of what could be either squash plants or melons, I'm hoping. So these should be able to sprawl out once they get growing. Here's the big onion patch. We've got some reds at the bottom of there, doing really well. I'm really pleased with those. And we've got some whites here at the top. Just have loads of onions this year. Here's some more potatoes we planted as a second crop. And more of the same. And that's the third bed of potatoes in this row. Here's the spring onions. We grew these from seed. A bit of an experiment this year. Let's see how these turn out. Here are my radishes, that's red there. I've been eating these for breakfast practically every day. And here's some beetroots I've planted in between. They're doing all right. And a few little tomato seedlings that have popped up, as they tend to do. Little seeds in the compost have come to life. Here's our cow parsley. Let's open the doors, open the house, let's have a look in here. We've got one tomato, there's a few little fruit on it. Another tomato. A pumpkin possibly, or maybe a cucumber, I'm not quite sure. Another tomato, another tomato, and another tomato. So there's quite a few tomatoes in here. We go to the top shelf, but here's where we grow our peppers. These are just the green and red ones I got from Wilco. We've already got a few flowers on, and they're doing really well in the greenhouse. They like the heat. I've put them in trays of water at the bottom so they don't dry out. And there's a few little seedlings, tomato, an asturtian, and some comfrey growing there. And here I found is a very successful way of growing carrots to put them in little pots high up away from slugs and snails and badgers and the carrot fly. And these have done really well over the past few years. Here. And here's some little tomato seedlings I was telling you about. They popped up everywhere so I've just put them in a the pot and I can give them to my neighbours as little gifts. And here's some more carrots growing really well. Around the back of the shed here, this gigantic vegetable plot here with some really quite healthy looking potatoes. Again, lots of cardboard to keep them moist and earthed up. So that's a really good potato bed. And you forgot, here we go, the bronze red lettuce. These have done really well, so we've had a really good crop of lettuce this year. And I'll take a few more for breakfast. And here's some carrots, and they're quite big carrots. And here's our everlasting lettuces. I found that I can just cut these back and they keep growing back, it's amazing. We've had loads of lettuce. Uh, behind me, it's one of our favourite plants which has just come into flower. It's the grapevine and it's just started to set a few fruit there, those tiny little uh, green globes. We planted this early last year, beginning of 2019. Didn't produce that much fruit, but this year it seems to have got a bit wild. Overdue for a pruning, I think, this one. Here's the pond. Just spotted our resident frog in the pond in full view. We don't see that very often. Let's see if we can sneak up on him. It's just about to jump under the surface any second now. And he's gone. And here in the pond we have our second frog. 
take quite a lot of trouble to rebuild the pond this year. So reform the rockery, got some pine cones, comfrey, a blackthorn bush, geraniums and pelagoniums growing here. A pampas grass. And we've made a little bit of a nature area here. Lots of spiders living in that pile of bark. And here's our nature area. Lots of logs and stones that things can live in. Lots of spiders again. They'll be very happy in there. But this little bit of oak here as a seat. It's a really nice feature. We've been collecting these oak pieces. Also, I had to quickly mention the comfrey plant. As I showed in my other video, we've got quite a few of these plants growing around the plot. They're all growing really strongly this year, providing plenty of food for the bees. And here's a comfrey plant I dug up. Put the root in a pot with a bit of water. Just letting it grow really strong before I plant it out. I'm going to find another home for this. And right on cue, here's a bee. See the fig tree up here. It's enjoying itself. It's loving this hot, sunny weather. It's got a few fruit here and there. So we'll have a bumper crop of figs this year, I'm hoping. Climbing French beans. I managed to grow all these from seed this year. So they've done really, really well, actually. Quite a few plants here, but you can't have too many French beans. Here's a runner bean plant that I got from Better Food, just to supplement them. All the way to the top. Here's the raspberry bed. So I planted these about a year ago. The beds really come to life. They're really happy here because they're getting plenty of light and they've been heavily mulched, so they should produce quite a nice crop. And here we have two plants, one was certainly a pumpkin. I found this growing on the path, but managed to rescue it. And here's one I've grown myself, which could either be a pumpkin or a melon. This is actually our fire pit that I've repurposed this year. I just popped some cardboard and a few boards and then filled it all with topsoil and organic material. And I created a kind of quick temporary bed for the pumpkins and the melons. So this is another patch of red onions we put in here at the top. They're doing really, really well. Really juicy looking onions. Here are the leeks that we've grown from seed. As you can see, I've put quite a heavy mulch of leaves on top here to keep the moisture in. The leeks seem to require quite a lot of water, I've noticed. And here are the sprout plants. Again, got these from the shop, six of them, but they've done really, really well. Heavily mulched with leaves. Quite moist soil underneath there, which is good. Happy sprout plants. Planted these from seed this year, grew them in the polytunnel and then planted them out. Put a large amount of hops down as a mulch to keep the moisture in. As you can see, we've got quite a few large beans appearing, so we should have a good crop of broad beans this year. All of four courgette plants, so we won't run out of courgettes this year. Another large patch of leeks, mulched with the leaf mould again. As you can see, here's the bay tree. Then we'll just harvest a few bay leaves off it and dry them out. Up here by the wall, I've trained this enormous bramble bush. See the size of this thing, it's just one bush. And this has got loads of flowers on it, so let's see if it produces any fruit this year. And behind us here, the new asparagus bed. Now these are asparaguses we grew about 12 months ago from seed, so they've actually done quite well. They were in the greenhouse for a few months, and then we planted them out this spring. A bit of new growth on some of them. We've made a real effort to grow asparagus this time. I've created some dedicated asparagus growing areas. This is a second fig tree. Now, quite why we need two fig trees, I don't know, but we've got one. This is the rhubarb plant growing pretty well. And here's an asparagus plant that just popped up in the middle of the path here. I'm just going to let it grow and maybe transplant it next season into one of the beds. This is our blackcurrant bush that we popped in. Got this from the shop. Got some fruit on it already. And here's another of a total of 14 asparagus plants we planted this year. So this one's doing really, really well. That's a happy plant. And there's a view of the damson tree from the back. There's a few little damson fruits on it. And let's have a quick look in the polytunnel. So we've got one tomato plant, another tomato plant. Here's a bush cherry type tomato plant. And we had one of these last year and it produced literally thousands of fruit. This is an aubergine plant. Nice big pot, plenty of water, plenty of food. That seems happy. There's its sibling. Hopefully we'll get a good crop of aubergines in the polytunnel. Give them a good misting. Keeps the leaves nice and moist. And we've got either melons or pumpkins growing here. Got one, two, three of them so they can sprawl out. Our amazing cucumber plant. Last year this produced 120 sprout plants that I've grown from seed. A few more melons and pumpkins. And more of the same. Could be a courgette and a cucumber in there as well. These are French climbing beans. I planted from seed so I'm going to give these away to my neighbours. Quite hard to grow, I'm told, but I'm going to give it a try this year, see if we can grow some celeriacs. It's the polytunnel. I created a total of four of these large asparagus beds here. There's room for about 20 plants. These smaller plants are the ones that we grew from seed last year and planted them out in the spring. 
and the really big ones on the left that I put in last year or the year before I got from the shop, but they've grown really tall. This one here must be about six feet tall, a really big one, and they've produced a small amount of uh, crop to eat as well. Well, I can't really do too much with these concrete areas, so what I've done here is I've created a kind of wood pile of nature reserve, and this will all rot down, create a nice selection of rotten wood. As you can see here, something's already started to burrow into there. There have been sightings of a wasp in there, so this is a great nature habitat here. On the side of this concrete area, I've built this little triangle out of the boards here, filled it up with organic material and topsoil, and planted some pumpkin and melon plants. What they'll be able to do is just sprawl out over this concrete area here. It's a perfect pumpkin area, I've realised what I can do with it. On the other side we've got another two, and this little temporary bed that I just knocked together very quickly. And my maize plants, sweet corns, haven't grown these before but grew these from seed. Some cheap ones from Wilco, just 50 pence I think for a packet. Need to protect these from the badgers once they start producing their fruit. Really looking forward to some sweet corn this year. A little dwarf French bean that I grew from seed here. There's another large dedicated potato bed here. Again, mulch with cardboard, keep the weeds down, keep the potatoes happy. We won't be short of potatoes this year. And my favourite, the Monge twos. Grew these last year and they were really, really popular, so put some more in. Some I've grown from seed, others I just got from better food. At the back here is this amazing plant, is the Physelia, the bee plant. As you can see, the bees are out in force. <laughs> You've never seen so many bees. I thought that maybe there were slightly fewer bumblebees than there should have been this year, but they seem to have turned out in force, which is good. So glad I planted this. It's got a lovely, very faint floral scent to it. It's a great plant. This is the quick overview of this additional plot I took on. It's about 18 months now. Spent two winters trying to dig it all over. Really went for it and just built these beds here. Put loads of stones and wood chip down and some really nice fertile growing areas. Really pleased with the way this has turned out. Here's a few wildflowers, poppies, orange, mustard and nasturtiums just growing on the side here. We've got some pieces of slate here with all these stones which will hopefully provide an area for the slow worms to move into though I haven't seen any evidence of them yet I'm sure they'll turn up at some point and now we can move over to the last plot, the third plot quite a few calendula plants growing here some pelargoniums and geraniums chives are growing here in the pot, more geraniums some mint a bit wild here with the grass and here's a hibiscus plant and it's got a wonderful colour hasn't it? We've got some white clover here growing at the side of the plot. And here's a last potato patch at the back there. The fifth courgette plant. So we're going to have loads and loads of courgettes this year. Raspberry plants, we'll get quite a few raspberries on. I think we'll have a good crop of raspberries this year. Here's these pear trees. It's only got a couple of fruit on. There's another raspberry plant with more fruit on it. This is the second pear tree. Doing much better, got quite a lot of fruit on it. We'll remember to net this up thoroughly this year. Here's some white onions here, that's a big bed of those. Nigella's plant there with the white flowers. The lower of the two apple trees got a few fruit on there. We've been making a real effort to water it this year and feed it. So it's got plenty of hops and ash to keep it fed and watered. We've got a few little buckets of mint here. And here at the top we've got another patch of broad beans growing. I must remember to put some stakes in for these. A gooseberry bush with plenty of nice juicy gooseberries on it. And here's the top apple tree. It's got a few fruit on it. This is growing really big. Must be about four years old now. It's quite a big tree. And here we have the horseradish plant. We don't really eat the horseradish, but it's great for making compost out of. The lilac is here. It hasn't produced any flowers yet, but it will do soon. We are very blessed to have such perfect weather at this time of year. It's been so dry. Not too warm, but bright and sunny. Really lovely days. Well, that's our little allotment roundup for June 2020. We'll come back later in the autumn and see how things are going.